Hey friends, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a stained glass window using watercolor paint. Now, what you're gonna need first is a piece of watercolor paper. If you don't have watercolor paper, just find the thickest drawing paper that you can, alrighty? Then, you're gonna need some masking tape. And I have a towel here to show you what I'm gonna do with my masking tape, but you can just use the shirt you're wearing or your pants, you'll see what I mean. Next, you'll need a brush. Here I have a round brush and a flat brush. You can use either or. Of course, you'll need a little cup of water, your watercolor paint, and last but not least, you're gonna need some salt. Here I have my sea salt grinder for a coarser grain. And here I have just simple table salt or salt that you bake with, which is much more fine. It's much more smooth and smaller grain. That's gonna give us some texture later on. But first, I'm gonna start by adding a frame around my artwork. Now I'm gonna hold mine sideways just because it's easier for me to show you what I'm doing. But you can uh, hold your paper the long way if you want. First things first, let's get to taping. I'm gonna make a frame around mine because I want a nice clean edge. Now what we're gonna do before we put our tape down, if I can find where it starts, hello. There it is, haha. -ha. We're gonna do a pre-stick. You wanna get rid of some of the stickiness of your tape so it doesn't rip your artwork later on. And the way we do that, measure the length of your page. You can even stick it down to a surface, rip. And before I just put it right on my paper, I'm gonna stick it to my towel and pull it up. This takes away a little bit of the stickiness so my paper is not at risk of ripping later on. Now I'm gonna put this right up to the edge. If you have washi tape, this works well too. Smooth it out, no air bubbles. And I'm gonna do the same for each edge. So measure, rip, pre-stick, and place. Now typically you can just do this to your shirt or your leg, you don't have to have an actual towel next to you, but anything to get rid of a little bit of stickiness from your tape. Now that I'm done adding the frame to my artwork, it's time to add designs using your tape. Now I want this to look like a cool stained glass window, as I said before, but I want it to have some symmetry to it. Same on both sides. You do not have to do this whatsoever. You can just place tape down any which way you want. Horizontal, vertical, diagonal, totally random to get a really cool look. But if you wanna keep it even and the same on both sides, you can apply your knowledge of symmetry. Now to start, I'm just gonna split my window right in half, okay? Same rules apply. Rip it, stick it, place it. And make sure you really smooth that tape out. You don't want any air bubbles in there. So now that I have finished putting down all of my tape, I wanna smooth out any air bubbles. If you see any air bubbles or your tape popping up, your paint might scoot right under there and that defeats the purpose. We're putting this tape on, this masking tape on, to actually create a mask. What does a mask do? It covers things. So we are covering and protecting our taped pieces of paper, and then the colors are gonna go where the tape isn't. You'll see what I mean in a little while. So now that I'm done with my tape, I'm gonna scoot this off to the side and get to my water coloring. Here we go. Now the first thing I'm going to do is actually use my water. I'm gonna use my water to wet my page. I wanna dampen the whole page. Now if you're using regular drawing paper, you might wanna do this in smaller sections, okay? You just want a nice damp layer. This will make the colors blend and bleed really beautifully. And we want damp paper for the salt to absorb later on when we add our color and the texture. So it's a smooth, thin layer just to dampen your paper and you can always re-dampen it as you go. 
So that's why I brought out my flat brush. It's a little easier for me to spread out the water with the flat brush. And I think that's good. No puddles, a little bit of cat hair, but that's what happens when you own cats. So make sure you have no pet hair in there and uh, you can keep going. Or maybe it just wants to be part of the art. I submit. Anywho, I'm gonna start painting. Remember, you need to wake up these watercolors with water. Let it sit for a moment. Dip, 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 sideways scoots. And then of course, paint away. And you can paint right on top of your tape, okay? So I'm gonna do the whole thing. I think I'm going for a rainbow theme here, but you can see how the paint is not too thick. It spreads out because of the wet moisture of the paper. They blend together super nicely. You can blend right in. Awesome. I'm gonna finish this painting up and I will meet back with you in a moment to do the salt. All right, now that I have finished painting, I'm gonna move fairly quickly and add my salt. And where it hits the wet paint, it's going to absorb the color as it dries. Whoa, be careful, make sure you have a mat underneath you. I have a plastic surface, so that's okay. Um, I won't get any mess there. So the big pieces of salt will create much different textures than the little pieces. The little salt is much more subtle but still kind of lovely. And you don't want your paper to be too, too, too wet. I'm gonna add these big pieces again. Woo! You can even adjust your settings too if you have a cool grinder like this. Here we go, let's see what happens. And make sure you have a vacuum nearby for when you're done because your salt might go everywhere. Now comes the waiting game. And while you wait for your entire piece to dry 100%, you can uh, wash your brushes, clean out your water cup, put away that extra salt, and your watercolors, you wanna let them dry open because you don't want these to get moldy or yucky. So I'm just gonna leave these aside and let them dry open like that. I'll catch up with you when my painting is dry. So now that my painting has dried, I'm going to wipe off my salt in little circular motions. You can do this right over a trash can to make it easier. It's a little weird sounding and can be a little uncomfortable on your fingers. So if you wanna put your hand in a plastic bag and do it that way, you can to avoid that texture. But as you rub away the salt, you'll notice the little texture it leaves behind. The salt has absorbed some of the water and it leaves behind this really cool pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and I'll meet back up with you when it's salt free. Alrighty, my salt is gone and as you can see, I have these cool little patterns in my stained glass art piece. And the last thing you have to do is just take off the tape. Now you wanna start with the tape that's on the top, not the one that's underneath everything. And when you peel away your tape, instead of pulling up, pull along the paper, close to the tape edge. That way, in case your tape is a little sticky, it won't rip your paper as easily. So be careful. See along the paper, not whoosh, straight up. Let's take the rest of this tape away. And there you have it, my friends. Your very own stained glass window. You can hold it this way, you can hold it sideways, any which way you want. And remember, you don't have to have a symmetrical design like this. You can just put that tape down any which way and see what happens. It's pretty cool and there are no rules. 
The only extra thing I wanna share with you is that if you feel that your white frame is just a little too plain for your taste, I personally like it, but it's your art, you get to decide, you can always go back in with a Sharpie and add some really simple, elegant designs, okay? Just little patterns of repeating lines, shapes, doodles and doodles as you will. Can't wait to see what you create.